Um, is there any, any interesting stories about your, your research or cool things that you do that um, you think the, the ESA members would be interested in? Cryobiology <laughs> is the study of life at low temperatures. So we're into cool and frozen bugs. That's what interests us. And um, probably the most exciting thing that I've done in the last few years is to be able to go and work on the southernmost insect in the world on the Antarctic Peninsula. And to, uh, to do this, we uh, fly to the tip of Chile, then we take a four-day ship ride across the Drake Passage, which are some of the worst seas in the world, and we end up at a tiny base of only 45 people uh, on the peninsula. And there we've gone to study, as I said, the southernmost insect, which is a midge, Chironomid, uh, Belgica Antarctica. As far as we know, there are no insects that are found further south. And the curious thing about this midge is that it's the largest land animal in Antarctica because penguins and seals only come in during the summer to breed and they take off. And this giant ranging all the way up to six or seven millimeters is the largest land animal they know of in Antarctica. Cool. So we're interested in trying to answer some questions about how is it that they can survive, that they're found here, and no other insect is found further south. So what's special about them that allows them to inhabit a, a very rigorous environment? The, the plant communities are dominated by lichens and moss and some terrestrial algae. There's only two flowering plants. That's all there is down there. So you have the most simple terrestrial communities uh, there's a number of species of calembola and mites, there's one tick on the seabirds, but Belgica is the only uh, insect that's present. And I first got to go down there when I was a postdoc out of the University of Houston in 1980 and 1981. And at that time we could characterize some of the stress adaptations, or at least the fact that they could tolerate a range of stress. They could survive freezing year round. They could survive, survive anoxia. They could survive immersion in seawater or in fresh water, although they live primarily on land. Uh, you could dry them out to about 30% of their body mass. They look like little raisins. They look terrible. You're sure they're dead. Then you add water, they plump up, and they wiggle away. And I think they're laughing at us that that's no big stress to them. And so then, 25 years later, um, I got together with Dave Denlinger, and we applied to the National Science Foundation to go back and take a look at the underlying physiological and molecular mechanisms that are involved in its survival. And so we went down in 2005, 6, and 7. We recently got a, a renewal, and we'll be going down uh, this year and also the two years after that to continue these studies. So. That's great. That's that's really interesting. Is there? Um, I know a lot of people will probably be interested interested as well in um, practical applications of knowing about things that can survive really cold temperatures. And can you speak to that at all? As well, um, more generally, our my research lab at Miami University is interested in how cold blooded animals, ectotherms, so insects, frogs, and turtles, how they tolerate low temperature, and. It, Although we do it primarily out of a basic research interest, there is uh, application that can come from this. Uh, currently we have no um, way to cryopreserve human organs. You can't cryopreserve a heart or a liver or anything like that. Um, you can do blood, you can do some skin, uh, for example, but not organs. And so a lot of organs go to waste or there's not good matching between the unfortunate donor and the recipient. So if we take a look at something like uh, this wood frog, which has the same systems that we have, closed circulatory system, heart, liver, very similar metabolism, uh, they can survive freezing of all their organs simultaneously. And so if we could truly understand how these organisms tolerate freezing, including the insects, we might have some clues as to a way to cryopreserve uh, human organs. Another possibility is if we could better understand how insects deal with the low temperature, we might be able to better store uh, various sorts of biological control agents for mass release and to facilitate uh, stockpiling of these organisms. Great. That's, that's very interesting and important as well.